Hi guys, Uncle Mike again. Uh, I thought I'd make a little video here and show you some of the upgrades I've done to my uh, everyday carry gun, my little uh, Ruger LCP. Yes, I got it back from my uh, Ruger. Uh, after I bought the thing, within 24 hours of buying it, I had to send it back to, uh, to Ruger because the extractor fell out of the gun. Got lost, completely lost it. Uh, the extractor, the, the spring, the little plunger that was uh, supposed to hold it all together, three shots and it just went apart you know i don't know where it went we looked for it for quite a while but uh yeah within 24 hours ruger had it back in the mail and it was being sent back to them and and they did indeed send me it back in a, in a timely manner they had it within uh for less than 24 hours they got one day put the parts back into it fired 30 rounds through it and was sent, sending it back out the next day uh, the reason they were able to turn it around so fast is they <laughs> didn't clean my gun. It was uh, all full of gunpowder and, uh, and you know, brass filings. Uh, it would have been nice if they'd have cleaned it, but instead what they did do, and it would have been nice too if they would have sent me a, a free clip and said, you know, here's a free clip for your uh, inconvenience and your, and your sorrow, I guess. But uh, instead what they did, you know, is they sent me the gun filthy and uh, gave me a cleaning cloth with their logo on it said, clean it yourself. Uh, that's how they can get away with uh, putting it back out in such a timely manner. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. I got it uh, back and it, and it does work. Uh, here's some of the uh, upgrades I've done to it here. Oh, there's their fancy little uh, cleaning cloth that they gave me. That the gun's sitting on. Uh, some of the upgrades that I've done to it. Uh, let's see here, I'll show it to you. Yeah, it is an empty empty gun. Uh, I bought some garrison uh, extensions here, little grip extensions. The problem that I was having was uh, I got big fingers, you know, big old mammoth, you know, monkey fingers here. I couldn't get a second finger around my gun to hold on to it. Uh, the problem that I was having here is just that, you know, their, their little extension, extension that they gave you was just enough to tease me and let me think that I was going to get that finger on there. With these... Uh, the new uh, piece on there, let me see if I can get this camera over here. Uh, I can get almost all three fingers around my gun now. I can get a good grip on this gun and hold on to it. Uh, and it uh, does make it a little bit thicker in my pocket. You know, it's uh, it fills up the, my pocket so that the, it actually holds the gun straighter in my pocket. And it, and it does touch on both sides of my pocket, but uh, that's not a problem. I, I, I grab the gun, hit it, you know, grab it right here in the center of the grip, and it pivots out this way, and it clears my pocket with no problem at all. The other uh, thing that I did was I had to get me some, I uh, got me a rogue uh, grip for it, uh, and that fills up the palm of my hand a little bit better, kind of cushions it, you know, fills out and rounds up, uh, rounds out the, all these uh, corners that are uh, on here. So it's a nice uh, rubber grip. I was afraid that the rubber might snag in my pocket. I'm not having that problem, which is a good thing. Uh, it doesn't hold it. You know, I had I had another little gun, a little 22. Uh, or what is it? A root or not a Ruger? Uh, Beretta. That's what it was. A little Beretta 22. And uh, I put some pack more rubber grips on that. I just couldn't get it to slide out of my pocket. I didn't like it at all. But the other thing that I did was I filled in these uh, letters here, and uh, that was just done with a crayon. Uh, Crayola crayon. You just melt your. Uh, your crayon and let it drip into your lettering and then take a credit card scrape off all the excess you know on top of there and then buff it out with a paper towel uh done it to almost all my guns now and it tends to last a couple of years before they flake out of there and then you got to redo it again uh, but i do like the uh the lettering standing out a lot better than you know not having it at all um, some of the other things that i've done for it here um let's see here let me zoom out here a little bit here so we can get more of this Oops, that's the wrong way. Okay, we're out as far as we're going to go. Uh, out for the uh, for the range, I got me a 15-round clip. Six rounds, and then having to reload got a little tiresome. 15-round uh, clip. <laughs> Looks a little ridiculous hanging out of the bottom of the gun, but it's a lot better and a lot funner to shoot. Uh, the other thing that I did for it was I picked up a new trigger. It's called a Sweet Pea Trigger for it. Uh, the Sweet Pea Trigger has an adjustment screw up here in the tip here and one here in the back side of the uh, the trigger and what that does is it allows you to to adjust the travel this direction and adjust the over travel in the back well 
my gun happens to be the one that was made after 2013 or 2013 and uh, in the one that after 2013 they've shortened the trigger pull on this gun by 35 percent and so where the trigger was at was up here and it would come back to where it's at now before it went off the trigger that they put you know that they sold me it's, it makes it back like the old gun where uh, before two, uh, 2013 where you had to pull it all the way back to the wall before the gun would actually uh, go off. Let me double check the gun again here. It is a safe gun and what's the problem that I'm running into here is watch that trigger. All the way back, all the way back and then it goes off. Well, you can see the angle that that trigger is at right now. Your finger slides down the trigger and then slides across the bottom of your gun every shot. I asked him if I could trade this trigger off because the trigger that came in the gun, and I'm not sure if I can point this out to you or not. Uh, let me see if I can set this gun down. Uh, let's see, let me turn it at. Yeah, okay, we're going to get rid of some of the stuff that's black in the background here. Okay, can you see that pin in there? That pin is drilled at an angle of Oh, say 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock. That's the way the trigger is drilled. It's designed to fit in your gun and be sitting at quite an angle forward, like so. And by sitting at quite an angle forward, when you pull it back, it doesn't have to go back quite as far before it travels and fires the gun. The angle on this trigger that they sell you, whoops, let me get the trigger back in the gun here, or in focus here. That pin that's in the gun now is drilled straight down. And they did this so that you can take this the screw here and adjust it for your over travel and the other screw that's up here in the front on the top and adjust it for travel this direction. I'm not worried about that. I could care less about the travel of my trigger, over travel or under travel. Uh, what I am concerned about is the angle of my trigger. My trigger used to sit you know, at an angle like this here. It is now sitting like this. That's something that I don't care for. So what I did was I contacted uh, Galloway uh, Precision, who sells the, uh, this, this is called a Sweet Pea Trigger anyway, and Ross from uh, uh, RTK uh, Tactics, I believe it is, is the one that makes the, the trigger. And uh, they allow uh, Galloway uh, to sell their... Uh, the triggers for them. So I contacted Galloway and of course they gave me the standard uh, uh, you know, email back, well the trigger that we sold you is a correct trigger that uh, the other trigger will not work in your gun because the geometry of the parts inside your trigger or inside the gun are so much different that they will not fit. Well, <laughs> buddy my factory trigger was drilled like that and it fit just fine. You know, I don't see the problem. I do understand that I'm not going to be able to use my tra or the, the screw up in the front and the, and the one here in the bottom. Don't care about that. So what do I do? I contact Ross. Ross that makes the, the trigger himself. Uh, his wife ended up uh, emailing me back and she, she says, well, uh, it doesn't appear to me that there's going to be a problem uh with the other trigger but we're going to allow ross to look over your email and he'll get back to you on monday well i'm still waiting for monday to roll around so uh, hopefully there's not going to be a problem and i'll be able to get the right trigger that i wanted in the first place but uh even this trigger here is not a bad trigger it's just that it feels very uncomfortable to shoot it uh wasn't what i was hoping to do what i wanted to do is you know they got so much arch in the factory trigger here that it's kind of uncomfortable in your finger. It, it pinches you on the top and bottom here. I was trying to take some of that arch out of my trigger and maybe get something a little bit wider so that it wouldn't feel like it was such a chunk, you know, piece of plastic that you were, you know, trying to pull on. And uh, I, that's what I received. I got a trigger that was, uh, you know, a lot wider, and uh, and it uh, it took a lot of the arch out of it. But now I've got the problem where as you pull it back, your finger slides down your trigger. Not a too awful bad, but it is a little bit uncomfortable at the range. So, anyway, that's some of the uh, modifications I've done to it, and hopefully, it's uh, you know I'm not just being uh, too critical about the gun, but 
it is my everyday carry. It is what I'm going to have to rely my life on if I ever come down to it. And so I want it the way I want it. Uh, you guys can probably understand that. I have tried to just, uh, paint in the tip of the, uh, the site here, the front site, so that I can see it a little better. Painted it with some orange paint. Stuck it in the holster and it peeled right back off. Uh, obviously I didn't have the right uh, paint for it, but I'm going to try that again too. So anyway, that's the gun and hopefully you guys uh, like some of the modifications I've done to the gun. Some of the other modifications I am planning on doing, I haven't got a hold of it yet, is they have a, uh, uh, a heavier recoil spring for uh, shooting factory loads uh, or heavier loads. It's uh, I guess it goes up to 13 pounds and uh, that takes some of the, the kick out of the gun. It, it doesn't, uh, as this thing comes back and, and it, you know, it, it, it takes some of the felt recoil out of your gun. Uh, the other thing I was going to do is there's a, a trigger spring in here, or, a ha or the hammer spring I guess they call it, and uh, you can get a lighter one. And what that does is it takes a pound and a half of the felt trigger pull out of your trigger. So that would make it a little bit, you know, nicer at the, at the uh, range too. They say with the lighter trigger uh, or the lighter uh, hammer uh, spring, it still is enough to, to fire factory loads with a standard primer in it, which I don't know what they mean by standard primer. That's the only primers I know that it's a standard primer. But anyway, uh, that's some of the uh, upgrades I'm still looking to make, but uh, just haven't done it yet. So talk to you guys later. Bye.